The first thing you should understand about JavaScript is that it is not Java. JavaScript and Java are two totally separate languages. The confusion in the name stems back to the origin of JavaScript. Back in 1995, at Netscape, the makers of the Netscape Navigator web browser, the first popular web browser, uh, Brendan Ice was tasked with creating a new language that would be embedded in the browser, and he originally intended to call the language LiveScript, but the marketing people decided they wanted to ride the coattails of this other new language called Java, which was also being embedded in the browser, though in a different way. So Netscape and Sun reached a deal where Netscape could use Sun's trademark Java to call their language JavaScript. So originally JavaScript was only implemented in the Netscape browser, but then Microsoft implemented it in their Internet Explorer browser, but they called it JScript so they didn't have to get trademark permission from their rival. A few years later, a standard for the language was created by a European standards body called ECMA, and they called the language ECMAScript. In practice, though, everyone has always called the language just JavaScript. For most of its history, the vast majority of JavaScript code written is written to run inside a web browser. In fact, the real reason JavaScript has become popular at all is because it's your only choice if you want to write code that is going to run in all popular web browsers. For a long time, in fact, the only JavaScript interpreters that existed existed inside the browsers. In recent years, though, a few JavaScript interpreters have been created that run outside the browser, and they're beginning to pick up a little bit of use. For a long time, JavaScript in the browser was used only to do very trivial things. This was largely because the JavaScript support in the various browsers was very uneven, and you had lots of headaches if you wanted to write code that would run properly in all the different browsers. Since about 2002 or 2003, though, the situation has greatly improved, and so people are trying to do more and more ambitious things with JavaScript in the browser. Consequently, the major browsers, particularly Firefox, Safari, and Chrome, are focusing a lot on optimizing their JavaScript interpreters. So the JavaScript interpreters that we have here in 2009 are much better than what we had just five years ago, and they're probably going to get a good bit better in the next five years. When you write JavaScript code to include in a web page, your code sees the contents of the page in what's called the DOM. The DOM, standing for Document Object Model, is the hierarchy of objects that represents the content of a web page. We can access and manipulate the elements of the DOM using a set of standard functions that are included in the browser. So we can do things like, say, have the color of some text change when the user clicks on a picture in the page. AJAX, which you may have heard of, is simply a term coined around 2003 to refer to a particular JavaScript technique whereby our JavaScript code requests or submits some data to a server without having to refresh the page. So for instance, the user can click on something, that'll trigger a request to a server, the data comes back to the page, and the JavaScript then uses the DOM to insert it in place. If we didn't use this technique, the only way you'd get the same functionality is if the user clicked the link and that triggered a request to a server for a whole new web page and the web page would come back and it would have that data inserted in place. That's basically the way the web always worked for the first 10 years. It's just not as nice because one, it's slower, you're requesting a whole new page, and you also get this ugly refresh where the whole page disappears and then it comes back. With JavaScript and Ajax, we can make the data just cleanly appear. In this unit, we're not going to cover the DOM or AJAX or JavaScript in the browser at all. We're just going to cover JavaScript, the language itself. So if we're going to characterize JavaScript, we would say that first it's a dynamic language, just like Pigeon, really, and also people often say it's functional, though I would say just a little bit functional. It's really not any more functional than Pigeon is. It's mainly functional in the sense that it has first-order functions. It has functions which you can use as values. JavaScript also facilitates a degree of object-oriented programming, but the way it does so is quite different from what you see in C++, C Sharp, and Java. In those languages, you have a notion of what are called classes, but in JavaScript it's a much simpler system using what is called prototyping. The data types in JavaScript are really all the same things that we already saw in Pigeon. The only difference is that what we called lists in Pigeon are called arrays in JavaScript, and what we called dictionaries in Pigeon are called objects in JavaScript. I'll just remark here that JavaScript got it wrong. It really shouldn't have chosen these terms because the term array in other languages means something similar but really not the same. 
and the term object in programming is used very generically to mean basically just any kind of value and it has a more specific meaning in the context of object-oriented programming.